Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Hi, I'm Francisco Javier Esteva, medical oncologist, and today I'd like to share some thoughts about HER2 low breast cancer. HER2 is one of the most important biomarkers in breast cancer. When a patient is diagnosed with breast cancer, we always measure the estrogen receptor, the progesterone receptor, and HER2. HER2 is, uh, was discovered in the 1980s as an oncogene. It was the second member of the epidermal growth factor receptor family, an important family of receptors on the cell surface of, of, of many types of cells, particularly some type of breast cancer cells amplify this gene and use it to grow and proliferate. In 1998, a monoclonal antibody called trastuzumab or Herceptin was approved by the FDA for the treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer. But since then, the definition of HER2 positive breast cancer has evolved over time. And I'd like to share with you what HER2 positive means, what HER2 negative means, and nowadays what HER2 low means, which is a new category that we use to select specific treatments. HER2, when it's amplified, meaning in, ter in terms of two copies, some tumors have, some cells have many copies of the gene, can be assessed by fluorescent in situ hybridization, also known as FISH. When the FISH is positive, means the gene is amplified. That is a HER2 positive tumor. When the gene is not amplified, there may be still enough protein on the cell surface that can be assessed or measured using immunohistochemistry, a different technique where our pathologists can tell us if the tumor has a lot of protein called 3+, plus, no protein, zero, and then in between 1+, plus or 2+, plus, where there may be a percentage of cells that have some staining, is not complete membrane staining, it could be faint or intense, and they will tell us this is a 1 plus tumor, 2 plus, or 3 plus. When the tumor is 3 plus, we call it positive. But if it's 1 plus or 2 plus, and there is no gene amplification, then we would call that HER2 negative in the past. In 2022, a new treatment called trastuzumab deruxtecan, or in HER2, was approved by the FDA for patients with HER2 low breast cancer and in those, um, in that clinical trial called Destiny B04, patients with HER2 low breast cancer, meaning they were not positive, they were not negative, there was no gene amplification, but there was some expression of HER2 in the cells, 1 plus or 2 plus with no gene amplification. That was defined as HER2 low. And those patients were randomized to receive Trastuzumab deruxtecan, or in HER2, a new antibody drug conjugate, compared to uh, the a chemotherapy at the choice of the physician. And in that trial, in the Destiny B04, there was a significant improvement, progression-free survival, for patients receiving the Trastuzumab deruxtecan antibody drug conjugate. So going back to history, if we remember the development of HER2-targeted therapy, trastuzumab or Herceptin was the first one approved for patients with HER2-positive disease, the way it was defined 25 years ago in 1998. Later on, pertuzumab, another antibody, also known as Pergeta, was found to be synergistic in combination with trastuzumab, our laboratory uh, published that in 2004, uh, almost 20 years ago, and uh, subsequently clinical trials showed the combination of trastuzumab and pertuzumab was better than trastuzumab alone. And that was approved by the FDA and became a standard of care. Trastuzumab was also combined with an a chemotherapy attached to the antibody through a linker, and that was called trastuzumab DM1, or Katsala, and that was also a very effective therapy and approved by the FDA. And more recently, trastuzumab deruxtecan, this new antibody drug conjugate, has been also has been shown to be effective not only in HER2 positive tumors, but in HER2 low tumors, which we would call 
compared to negative in the past. So what's the difference between trastuzumab, the rook sticky, and the new therapy, and trastuzumab DM1, let's say the previous antibody drug conjugate, where the antibody is bound to chemotherapy and is targeted chemotherapy directed against the tumor? Why trastuzumab DM1 was not effective in HER2 low, and now trastuzumab deruxtecan, it is effective in HER2 low tumors? There are different explanations for that. One is the chemical structure, the linker that binds trastuzumab antibody to the chemical, to the chemotherapy, is different in both uh, antibody drug conjugates. Trastuzumab DM1 is very stable linker, while trastuzumab deruxtecan is not so stable and the chemotherapy can be released. The chemotherapy 20 body ratio is also much higher in the trastuzumab deruxtecan or in HER2 compared to Katsila. And also there is this bystander effect, which is probably related to all these issues, as well as some immune effects, which are mediated by the antibody itself. But the bystander effects, meaning affecting other cells that are um, uh, around the cells that are targeted by the antibody can be also killed or eradicated by this antibody drug conjugate. So this has made a big difference in the way we see HER2 positive breast cancer, now HER2 low, where trastuzumab deruxtecan is an option. And then we are trying to define what is HER2 negative um, breast cancer. So in this area of HER2 testing, when a tumor was, there was no gene amplification and no protein expression, it was called HER2 zero plus negative, but that itself had a definition by our pathologist where if there was less than 10% of cells positive, then we'd call it zero. And a clinical trial reported in 2022 actually showed that in patients with this HER2 not low by ultra low, where there were some cells between one and 10% of cells positive there in the cancer cells. And those patients also seem to have some benefit from this antibody drug conjugate therapy. So the question is, would this benefit, this, this patients actually benefit from her to target the therapy with trastuzumab drugs again or not? And that's a clinical trial that is ongoing at the moment in 2024. Uh, hopefully the study will be uh, we'll have more information about this trial. It's called Destiny B06. In this trial, in the Destiny B06 trial, uh, patients with um, HER2 ultra low, which we used to be called HER2 negative, um, have been randomized to trastuzumab drugstikian or in HER2 compared to uh, standard chemotherapy, conventional chemotherapy. And the results of this study, this study hopefully will become available sometime in 2024. Another aspect that is relevant to uh, HER2 testing in the setting of breast cancer is the correlation between HER2 low and the estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor expression. Patients with tumors that are estrogen receptor positive or progesterone receptor positive, the likelihood of HER2 low is higher than in patients with triple negative breast cancer. Triple negative breast cancer means the estrogen receptor, the progesterone receptor, and the HER2 are all negative. Those patients are usually treated with chemotherapy, sometimes immunotherapy. Patients with estrogen receptor positive tumors, if they are HER2 negative, would be treated mostly with endocrine therapy and other uh, combinations and the HER2 positive, HER2 low, are now treated with HER2 antibodies or antibody drug conjugates, and possibly in the future, the HER2 ultra low may also uh, be uh, treated with this type of therapies. Now, in addition to the in, uh, original antibodies, trastuzumab, pertuzumab, Herceptin Progetta, or TDM1, Katsaila, and now and HER2, uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan, there are now a number of antibody drug conjugates under development. And these antibodies are being uh, tested in patients with HER2 positive disease, but also in patients with HER2 low disease, which were considered HER2 negative in the past 
And now, because of unheard to, there is interest in finding out if these treatments would work in patients with low levels of HER2 in the tumor, those clinical trials are ongoing. So there's a lot of excitement in this area. We have to remember 25 years ago, when a patient was diagnosed with HER2 positive breast cancer, her prognosis was really not good. Nowadays, a patient with HER2 positive disease has a lot of treatment options. And if she is diagnosed with stage one breast cancer, for example, the cure rate is more than 90%. So we've gone from the worst prognosis to the best prognosis because of the development of new therapies. So this is a really exciting time in oncology and particularly in breast medical oncology. Thank you very much. Please follow us at uh, Cancer Treatment Updates. We'll be talking about this type of new therapies for breast cancer, new therapies, other uh, new therapies. So uh, please subscribe and follow us on our next video.